This video accompanies our Learn to DJ email course and is for part three of the course, Getting Started Nearly for Free. The course is delivered in 50 weekly parts and you can sign up right now at digitaldjtips.com slash join. It's absolutely free to sign up. Okay, getting going for very little money. I'm going to tell you a few hints and tricks here today, which means that you can probably start DJing for, if not nothing, then certainly for just a few dollars. The first thing to get your head around before we talk about any of this is that you don't need a lot of gear to DJ properly. Look, back in the day, this was the rigor. This is what you needed to just get past go. Because in the clubs and in the bars and in the lounges, this is the kind of setup that you would be faced with. Two techniques and a mixer. And unless you had practiced to the point where you could perform a DJ set well using that, then you weren't going to be able to do it. Simple as that. So you needed this stuff at home. And it was fiendishly difficult to get the money to buy it and then to learn how to use it. It took years. Now, you don't need to do that. Now you can do it all with a laptop, some software, and a couple of tricks. And while there are people who say, you know, it's not how it used to be, it's terrible the way it's all gone, anyone can be a DJ now. Look, the truth of it is, yeah, anyone can be a DJ now. And it's still just as hard to be a good DJ. DJing was never about the gear. Look, once we'd got this gear, nothing changed for decades. This is what we had. It wasn't like we were always going out trying to find new bits of gear to add to our system. You don't need a lot of DJ gear in order to play well. You just need some way of playing a couple of records and mixing them together. And the rest of it, crowd reaction, reading the crowd, knowing your music, finding the best music, and then having the skills and experience to put it all in the right order. Look, that's nothing to do with gear. You can do that on iPods. You can do that on laptops. You can do it on USB sticks and Pioneer CD J players. You can do it on Technics. You can do it on... Serato or Track to Scratch. You could do it on any of this stuff. The way I'm telling you now, it's cheap, it's accessible, and you can get started straight away and get learning the skills. And it is a great way of learning. Please don't let anyone tell you it isn't. Okay, let's quick fire through the things you need. Look, a laptop. I've got a MacBook Pro here. I started off on a, a Fujitsu Siemens 400 UK pound laptop. And that was five years ago. You can spend three, four hundred dollars carefully and have a laptop that you can DJ on nowadays. You need software for it, and there's two pieces of free software that I can tell you about. One is called Virtual DJ Home, and the other one is called Mix, M-I-X-X-X. -X -X. Both of them are free, both of them will allow you to do everything that this does and more besides, and you can download them instantly and install them. Check on their websites so that your laptop is compatible and that it's the minimum spec required, or just download it, give it a go. Hey, it's not costing you anything. So there's the software and there's the computer. You're going to need something to listen to it through. Any speakers that you have that go loud and that have got some bass in them, it's going to be all right. Your home hi-fi, your home cinema speakers, a really good boom box, decent computer speakers, maybe gaming speakers with a bass bin under the table. But you can get those for $40. They're not going to sound great, but they're going to go loud and they've got a bit of bass and you're off. You know, you're practicing at home and you've got something that's good enough to let you hear your music and practice your mixing. You can go up to hundreds of dollars for good speakers. These are actually quite, quite cheap DJ dedicated monitors, but you don't need to go anywhere near that kind of expense. You know, and then of course you can go up to studio monitors, which are really useful if you're making your own music and stuff. You don't need it for practicing DJ. Any old speakers will do. Bit of bass, bit of volume. You're going to need the ability to listen to something else in your headphones to what is being played through your speakers. That's fundamental to DJ. And in the old days, your mixer, of course, was a mixer built into DJ software, so you don't need a mixer. But your mixer did, did that as well. Your mixer has got a headphones output on the front, a speaker's output on the back. Two outputs. Trouble is, a laptop's only got one output is just for the headphones. So where do you plug your speakers in? Traditionally, digital DJs have solved that by having an audio interface. This is an audio interface. This is the Native Instruments Tractor Audio 4. This is a great interface, sounds brilliant. It's got a headphone socket on the front and it's got a speaker socket on the back. And you USB that into your computer and bang, there you go. Headphones and speaker outputs. Trouble is, 
that's an expensive piece of kit. And even the cheapest interfaces are going to cost you appreciably more than what I'm about to tell you. So how do you do it? Well, you get one of these. This is a DJ splitter cable. And this splits the one audio output from your laptop into two. You plug your speakers into one and your headphones into the other. Job done. The only thing to remember is that you can buy cables that look like this, which are called splitter cables. You kind of see them in um, airport terminals when you're about to take a flight. And, you know, they're for boyfriend and girlfriend to plug into the same iPod and both listen to the same music. That's not going to be very good for DJing because it's the same output coming up both wires. And you need a different output. You need that to be your speakers, that to be your headphones, and you to have control over what's going down each. So you need a DJ splitter. You can buy these online from Amazon and eBay, or you can make your own up just by working out how, the, how it works. It just splits the stereo signal into mono, and the software can work with that. But you can buy them online, they're just a few dollars, and it's going to save you the expense of going to buy an audio interface. So there we go. Headphones. These are pro DJ headphones. These cost quite a bit, but you don't need to spend the kind of money that you would spend on these in order to learn to DJ. The only reason these cost a lot is that they're more sturdy than headphones that are a bit cheaper and they're very, very well insulated. When I put those on, I can't hear the outside world very well at all. And that's good for when you're DJing in a club because obviously it's very loud and you want to be able to cut that clutter out of the mix so that you can hear what you're preparing to play very clearly in your headphones without turning everything up so loud that it's, it's hurting your ears. But when you're practicing at home, of course, you're never going to be practicing at club volumes. So you don't need club headphones. All you need is headphones with a band on them so that you can wear them around your neck and your hands are now free to use your keyboard or your DJ controller. So any headphones that are this style is going to be absolutely fine. What you don't want to do is use headphones, you know, like um, ear, earbud headphones, where they're hard to put in and take out. So you're always fiddling, trying to get them back in your ears um, so that you can listen to your speakers and then your headphones and back to your speakers. They're no good. You need some headphones with a band. If you're going to go and buy them, just get something cheap. There's some quite cheap DJ headphones nowadays, and they tend to be flimsier and not as loud and not as well insulated as the ones I just showed you, and those, that kind of headphone. But as I say, not important for playing at home. And that's it for the gear. That's everything you need. All we need to talk about now is music. And I'm going to give you a shortcut, just one shortcut, one of many actually, that will give you free legal music and will also teach you a hell of a lot about assembling a DJ collection. And what we're going to try and do is replace the experience that I went through and that my kind of DJ went through when we were building up a DJ collection. That's kind of like six months worth of vinyl when I was DJing. That's a lot of money. That's, you know, you're talking a couple of hundred dollars there, at least, in music. And to build up that music took a lot of thought, took a lot of going out and listening to music, took a lot of networking, and you had to be very careful that you weren't wasting your money. Now, when you haven't got any money to spend on DJ music, then it's exactly the same kind of thing. You need to do some networking, you need to listen to a lot of stuff, you need to see what other people are playing, and you, you also want to try and find, I mean, there's a lot of white labels in here, a lot of stuff which didn't get released, um, and a lot of stuff which was exclusive, which I managed to find by asking around, by talking to producers, and by just generally spending a lot of time assembling it. And you want that. Just because you haven't got the money to spend on music, it doesn't mean you can't have it. The secret is soundcloud.com. SoundCloud, if you don't know that site, is well worth you spending a lot of hours on. SoundCloud is a site where producers and mashup artists and DJs upload their remixes, re-edits, their own productions, and you can more often than not download those with the blessing of the people who made the music. And by doing that, you assemble your own music collection the beauty about SoundCloud is a lot of the music on there is either upfront, i.e. it's not out properly, or it's never going to get released. So you're assembling quite an exclusive collection of music. But it gets better. SoundCloud allows you to friend people with favourite things. So you can very quickly build up a network of people who are kind of doing your work for you, coming up with material you like. You can look at what they're favouriting. You can listen to what they're listening to. It's a bit like Facebook for music. So... 
By using that service, you can find music in your style that's exclusive and that you needn't spend any money on. And even if the records are not downloadable on SoundCloud, quite often if you kindly message the person who uploaded it and say, please can I have your production, I'm a DJ, I'd like to use it in a mix, they'll not only give it to you, but give it to you with their blessing and then start sending you more stuff. Everyone has an inbox in SoundCloud. And if you go and check your inbox after a few weeks of joining, you'll probably find that there's a pile of stuff in there just because people who you've favorited, people who you've reached out to, people whose tunes you've commented on have taken the time to send you their latest stuff. It's a really, really great way of assembling music. It's free, and I know DJs who only play with stuff they found on SoundCloud because it keeps their sets so exclusive and so upfront. It really is a gem of a discovery if you haven't got the money to spend buying a lot of music online in the way that we used to buy vinyl. But even if you do buy music online, look, it's a dollar a piece to get a tune nowadays. And comparing that to $10 a piece for an import 12 inch or a white label, you really have got it good. So I hope today's video has helped to show you some easy ways of getting going for next to nothing, if not quite nothing. And in the next video, we're gonna look at choosing a brilliant DJ name. See you then.